Well, we're here at View Magazine, and we're going to be doing another up close with Sean Rosen. So let's hop inside and talk to Sean. What makes the View um, and its voice in the community differ from the more traditionally run media outlets? Um, I would say, without decorating it too much, it's a different publication. It's a different media outlet, website, and newspaper produced, and in a sense, I guess, controlled by the people who are involved in it and um, like any media it's a reflection of that so I would think that the differences between well I guess we're locally owned I mean there's most mm -hmm. media in the city is not owned locally this is owned locally meaning that all the money that goes into view or the readership or whatever it is goes right back into the community. So Where do you see printed media in five years time? Um, the ones that adjust and make you know uh, make the necessary changes that suit the times they'll still be where they are five, ten years, fifteen, twenty years down the line. The ones who don't do what they do efficiently, they will be gone as they've always been gone throughout history. I mean, newspapers have been coming and going since they started. But uh, when radio came along, newspapers kept going. When television came along, newspapers kept going. And that's just, uh, I believe, tactility is something that people look for, like to own, they like to see, they like to feel. We expand in our websites and all our web services, so if there's a dramatic change of some sort and print becomes less viable or less uh, less a way to serve people, then we'll do less. Why should people right. care about a local voice? A local voice meaning a local media outlet? Exactly. Okay. Um, I would say because the best way to affect things in reality, the world, the universe, or whatever it is, is to affect and to understand your local community. If you're nice to people that are close by, if you bring enjoyment to people that are close by, that's going to affect the way they treat people in their lives, and that ripple effect will keep going out. So the reason is because I think the best way to help the world and to be involved in it and to truly live life to the fullest is to be connected to the universe that surrounds you and not concern yourself overly with things that are happening on the other side of the world which you cannot affect, reasonably conceive of, or understand. You aren't from Hamilton. Not originally. What um, drew you to Hamilton? What made you end up here and what made you stay? Well, it's a couple of little things. Uh, I always was fascinated for a while when I was in high school with the concept of Canadian cities, big Canadian cities, because there was always the... Um, I thought the false impression that in Canada there were only two or three big cities. Mm -hmm. but So I started to look at what the actual, by definition, in North America were actually big cities. So it turned out, you know, but I knew this already because I knew the CFL and the Hamilton Ticats and Winnipeg and, you know, I knew all the big cities, but I sort of got this book on cities in the encyclopedia. So the big cities were Quebec City, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, Hamilton, Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver. Those were the big metropolitan areas in excess of half a million or whatever the number was. But Hamilton was always sort of not given the same respect somehow as the other ones, which I thought was interesting because it was the same size as Winnipeg or Quebec City. Right. And it turned out that the reason was because of its proximity to Toronto. It was a separate city with its own respective uh, suburbs, including Burlington. Eh? That's part of the CMA. They don't like to talk about that, but it's true. We'll have to fix that one day. Touche. Uh, no. Touche, <laughs> man. Sorry, brother, but like all the tax dollars from this CMA are going right into the core one day. And that's, they shouldn't be going to the GTA. You know, it's crazy they're getting our money. That's not the point. Okay, so <laughs> back to the issue at hand. I came to Hamilton because I, I was interested in it, and I was working for an alternative weekly in Montreal called The Hour, which I'd worked for for a year and a half, and that was my second newspaper, and I realized I couldn't really work for anyone else. I'm one of these people that just has to do things my way because I kind of believe it's the way to go. Uh, you know, not with a sense of ego, but with a sense of, like, I can't see any reason why not. Like, no one's explaining anything contrarily that makes any sense. So, Hamilton did not have an alternative weekly. I decided I couldn't work for anyone else. Went down to Hamilton, looked around, came down Highway 6, saw the beautiful city on the bay. I couldn't believe that there was nothing, that there would be nothing here. And then it turned out there were a collection of newspapers. There were, like, there was a section of the Spectator called Ego. There, was, there were different weeklies and monthlies that were kind of all over southern Ontario. But nothing was like a true, the Now Magazine of Toronto. Mm -hmm. There was no Now Magazine in Hamilton. So, uh... Decided to uh, with my business partner Ron Kilpatrick, who we started the paper together with, and uh, I was up at his house in Ottawa putting the plan together, and he liked the plan, and we had discussed it, so gathered up at some investment, not enough, and uh, <laughs> came down to Hamilton and started the paper in January '95, and it's been weekly ever since. And we also have other published uh, other newspapers. We have Echo Weekly, and uh, so on and so forth, and different websites. Do you have a favorite comfort food or something after a long day of work? What do you go home and just makes the day better? I would probably say how I enjoy food. When I get home, at the end of the day, I like to take a... Well, I go to the gym first. I got to do that. That's my... I do have to do something just to keep myself normal. At least as far as I'm thinking. Like, it's crazy. But no, anyways, go home. Uh, basically, uh, lie on the couch, take a nap, wake up around 7 or 8 o'clock, and then food becomes an adventure. And that's where I love Hamilton. I get in my car, I drive around, 
check out my favorite little spots and I sort of decide how am I feeling and there's such a selection in the city and that's why I think what you're doing in this whole show really reflects that. If you weren't doing this, mm -hmm. what do you think you would do? What would be something brand new, a new if direction? I, if I couldn't do this anymore, if right. this suddenly disappeared? More than likely for a long time I would probably work in another country as a waiter or a bartender. Wow. Yeah, I waited for five years and I know I could polish up my bartending skills. And I think if I did a really good job, uh, I could make a lot of money very fast. And once I made a lot of money very fast and a lot of new friends, eh, I don't know, then I do something different, whatever I felt like doing.